Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Today's episode is going to be battery maintenance. How to take care of your battery that has excessive corrosion on it. Time and time again I see it. Time and time again I hear customers complaining about it. Want to know what they can do with it and what they can do about it. There's a couple of old school tricks. One of them is take like a penny or a nickel and stick it on top of the battery and just leave it there and that's supposed to help the corrosion gravitate towards the penny and that's supposed to help it doesn't seem to help I've seen it time and time again I've also seen customers that said well uh, I was checking my battery and I was cranking it and it was a, a low crank or slow crank and back in the day we used to have to add water to the batteries because the cell would get dry so I added some water and now it won't crank at all Guys, with modern batteries, you do not add water to them. It just don't, it's a no-go, don't do it. But there are some special things that you can do to your battery to help keep it lasting a little bit longer. One of them is gonna be some kind of protective coating or spray that you could pick up from your local auto parts store. One of them is gonna be a little brush that you can use to detail, clean, and clean out the terminal, clean out the, uh, the cable ends, clean out the top of the terminal itself on the battery post. Uh, you can use baking soda and water, hot water mind you, to clean the top of the battery. You can use Coca-Cola. I've seen Coca-Cola used to do it. I've seen numerous things used to clean corrosion off the battery. But if it gets to be so, so bad, like the video clips I'm about to share with you, it's going to get embedded throughout that entire, uh, whether it's a ground cable or a positive cable, to the point where you really can't save it anymore and you're going to have uh, an excessive amount of resistance in those heavy duty cables as a result. So for right now, I'm going to show you a really badly maintained battery or, or lack thereof, lack their maintained battery. I'm going to show you some video clips of this battery that was so bad uh, I had to uh, try my best to try to clean it so that way I can actually get the vehicle to jump start and get the get everything to turn over so I can pull the vehicle around front and change the battery out. So let's take a look at this video clip. So this is lovely. This is corrosion on the positive terminal and over here on the negative this battery is just wasted. So obviously I can't jump it without cleaning it. So what we're going to do is use this lovely mixture of baking soda with very very hot water oh yeah it melted away baby just kind of drizzle it on there I need to just, just eat all that corrosion eat it look at the chunks just coming off And this is good because what it does, it'll actually, if you can get it onto the cable, it cleans it off thoroughly. I have a feeling we're going to need another cup here pretty soon, though. That is just a lot. Come on, baby. Yep, we're gonna need another cup, that's for sure. Alright, so we got our cup, got our scoop. And get our hot water. All right, some other things that you can get is something like this, which is pretty cool for both small and large terminals. And then you can use the brushes to clean the inside of the terminal itself and the other parts kind of work it around the actual terminal, get a good cleaning surface. Uh, you can also, if you can, 
get in between like so and try to scrub some of the corrosion that might be a little bit more stubborn around the edges there. Uh, but another one of the things I would probably do though, because this is going to take you some time, just keep rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until you get most of that off. Also, make sure you wear safety glasses. This stuff is very highly corrosive. You don't want me in your eyeballs for sure. And this one, see, we got it and in, it's involved in that wire pretty good. So, we're going to get into this and get some more maintenance action going on here to clean this up. But um, just some suggestions, helpful tips for you guys at home. Looks better already though, doesn't it? And if you don't have access to one of those special tools, you can also just use something like this. It's really, it's whatever's gonna aid you in cleaning the corrosion off of the battery. So see, even something like this little brush that you can pick up from Harbor Freight will suit you just fine as well. Scrub-a-dub-dub. All right, so that was some pretty gnarly stuff, man. I don't think I've seen a battery this bad in a long time. Usually there's a light amount of corrosion, but to see it this thick and this caked onto this battery means this problem has been going on for a while. And so when he came in with a no crank, no start, and you popped the hood, it was the first thing that you saw. Immediately you already kind of knew what was going on. So now the, op the, the question that I have for everybody is, at this point in time, if you know this is happening, and depending, of course it's always depending on the customer's affordability, but do you try to sell, upsell the, uh, the cables at this point in time? Because though the customer only had enough money to supply a new battery or replace the battery, uh, they did not want to purchase uh, a new positive or ground cable, which means they could have problems with their new battery later down the road. Uh, I tried to explain that to our service writer, assistant manager. He agreed with the same exact um, understanding that I had as far as replacing the cables because of all that corrosion. However, at the end of the day, it is entirely up to the customer. You cannot uh, force them to buy anything that they don't want to buy. So in this scenario, we did replace the battery as per the customer's request. So we did make the vehicle better. So that's always the number one goal of any auto shop is, did you make it better? That's the overall goal. Yes, we made it better. I'm sure he's going to be able to start his car no problem for, you know, a certain period of time until eventually he has other problems. Maybe he starts having more um, drain and, and it takes more effort to get the starter to turn over. Ergo, the starter goes out. Maybe the cables are not supplying enough um, juice between the alternator and the battery to recharge it. And the alternator has to work extra hard to get through that resistance. And then the alternator goes out. Guys, this is the kind of stuff you have to think about as a mechanic or as an automotive technician. It's not just what you can fix today, it's what you could be prevented later. So think about those kind of things when you see problems like this come into the shop. And that goes for just about anything else during your multi-point inspection. The multi-point inspection is absolutely crucial. Let the customer overall be the deciding factor between uh, what is replaced and what is not. And I think that if the customer would have replaced the positive and, and negative uh, cables and, and terminal ends on this particular vehicle, they would have less problems and it probably could have prevented any premature failure of the starter or the alternator in the distant future. That's all I got for this video, guys. Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Doses.